Now, I think that this is a very good question. Now, there are some things that we need to take care while solving this question. Now, the question says that modulus of a plus 2 and b minus 3, the product of these two numbers is equal to 24. And we need to find out integral solutions, integral values for a and b. Now, integral values, that means the values, uh, the values of a and b can be negative. It can be zero or it can be positive as well, right? Now, if I do a proper analysis of this, I can say that modulus of a plus two, this part will always be positive because modulus a will always be a positive number, okay? Or it can be zero. The least value of modulus a can be zero. If I add two to it, it will become a positive number. So since this part is always positive, to make the sum, sorry, to make the product as 24, which is a positive number, b minus 3 should also be a positive number. Fine. So here we'll be considering only those cases in which 24 can be written as the product of two positive numbers and not consider the ways in which 24 can be written as the product of two negative numbers. I'll give you an example. So I'll be considering 1 into 24. I may consider it. I may consider 2 into 12, 3 into 8 and so on. Or I may be considering 24 into 1, 12 into 2 and so on. But I will not consider minus 1 into minus 24. Minus 2 into minus 12, I will not consider because modulus a plus 2 will always be positive. Correspondingly, b minus 3 should also be positive so that their product will be equal to plus 24. All right, so this is the framework behind this. Also, one more thing, the value of modulus a plus 2 will always be greater than or equal to 2, All right? Because minimum value of modulus a, if you look at this part, modulus a, minimum value of this can be 0. If I'll add 2 to it, so the minimum value of modulus a plus 2 will be equal to 2. So it cannot be less than 2, all right? So now let's start making the cases and uh, the question will be very simple for all of you now. So modulus of a plus 2 and b minus 3. Since I know that the minimum value of modulus of a plus 2 will be 2. So the cases will be 2 into 20, uh, 2 into 12, then 3 into 8, 4 into 6. 6 into 4, 8 into 3, 12 into 2, and 24 into 1. So these are all the possible values for modulus of a plus 2 and b minus 3. Right? Now there is no need to look for the values of b because b minus 3 is either 12 or 8 or 6 and so on. Correspondingly for every case we'll get unique value of b. Now look at the first bracket, which is modulus of a plus 2, right? Modulus of a plus 2 is equal to 2. So in this case, the value of a, I'll write the value of a. So in this case, the value of a or the value of modulus a will be equal to 0. And hence, the value of a will be equal to 0. So there will be single value of a. But if modulus of a plus 2 is 3, then the value of modulus a, I'll write it separately, if modulus of a plus 2 is equal to 3, so value of modulus a will be equal to 1, and that will give me two corresponding values of a, that is plus, plus or minus 1. Similarly, when modulus of a plus 2 is equal to 4, modulus a will be equal to 2, and hence I'll get two different values of a, which will be plus or minus 2. So for all the remaining cases, I'll be getting two different values of A. Okay. So the number of possible values that A will take will be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So for all these cases, there will be two possible values and there will be one value for the first case. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 plus 1, 13. So there will be 13 different values of A and we'll have 13 different integral pairs for A and B. All right. So that's it. This is the answer for this question. That is 13. All right.
So if you'll take care of very small things, then it will be difficult for you to commit any mistake in such questions. So that was question number three. Let's move on towards question number four.